Welcome to Building Reddit. I'm your host, Ryan H. Lewis. In July of 2022, Reddit launched something a little different. They supercharged the avatar builder, connected it to a decentralized blockchain network, and rallied creators from around Reddit to design collectible avatars. Reddit users could purchase or claim a collectible avatar, each one unique and backed by the blockchain. And then they could use it as their avatar on the site, or they could take pieces from the avatar and mix and match with pieces of other avatars, creating something even more original. The first creator-made collection sold out quickly, and Reddit continued to drop new collections for holidays like Halloween and events like Super Bowl 57. As of this podcast recording, over 7 million Reddit users own at least one collectible avatar, and creators selling collectible avatars on Reddit have earned over $1 million. I think it's an understatement to say the program has been a success. With the upcoming release of the Gen 3 Creator Collection, I wanted to talk to some of the people behind the creation of collectible avatars. They helped me understand how collectible avatars grew from Reddit's existing avatar platform, how they scaled to support millions of avatars, and how Reddit worked with both individual artists and the NFL to produce each avatar. First, I wanted to talk to Vin, a director of product. Here he is. Uh, my name is Vin. I'm a product manager on the consumer side of things here at Reddit. Uh, I work on what we call the marketplace team. When you say marketplace team, what is that team responsible for? Yeah, it's a good question. So uh, the way that we think about the marketplace team is uh, we've got a great new product that's called Collectible Avatars. And what we think is really exciting about it is it's opening up a way for users to create and sell things to other users. And so the marketplace name is sort of, in, uh, it gives it the idea or it creates the sort of framework for people being able to transact and buy and sell from one another. Um, and so collectible avatars is that first of kind product for us. Okay. Could you tell me a little about the history of avatars at Reddit? Yeah. So um, interestingly enough, I've been at Reddit for five years, but Reddit has a storied history. A uh, company is uh, it's going on 18 years now. And the first version of the Avatars product uh, launched in 2015. And we all kind of uh, lovingly refer to it as the 8-bit version of the Avatar Builder. And um, it, was, uh, it was a really nice way for users to create identity and uh, add to this idea of self-expression on the platform. Um, it was uh, sort of the genesis of where we are today. And so the second version of the avatar builder that we launched, uh, launched in 2020, um, interestingly, it started out as a marketing effort to celebrate 15 years of Reddit. And we, we kind of took that idea and blew it out into a full uh, born consumer product experience. So what we ultimately ended up launching was not only a way for you to express identity, but for it to actually be connected to you when you post and comment. So um, in today's world, if you look at a comment thread, you'll see a bunch of little snooze, which are our little marshmallow shaped uh, avatar creations. And it's a representation of you on the platform. And it can be you as you are in real world, in real life. It can be you as you want to be expressed on Reddit. It's completely within your control. Um, so. We're really excited about continuing that work right now, and uh, Collectible Avatars is how we're continuing it. Was the Collectible Avatars project created from a desire to work with blockchain technology, or did it just happen to be a good fit? Collectible Avatars started with Avatars, and Collectible Avatars is now the second sort of incarnation of uh, the product, which is built on the blockchain. Um, and interestingly enough, it is the uh, combination of two teams. We had a team that was working on making blockchain accessible and useful for community use cases. And we had another team, which I was a part of, that was working on the avatar side of things, which is about uh, augmenting identity and making identity better on the platform. And the opportunity that we saw to bring them together was to 
allow creators, people who build on Reddit to actually make avatars because prior to collectible avatars, it was Reddit making them. We wanted to open up that opportunity for users to do it. And so the collectible avatars project was an opportunity to have creators make these goods, sell them, benefit monetarily from them. And one of the cool things about blockchain is whenever these goods are resold uh, and they don't, uh, they can be resold anywhere on the internet, royalties go back to creators. Um, so they have another way of financially benefiting from it. So um, the, the all in all use case for it is uh, allowing digital goods to be created by users for users to benefit from that. And we see avatars as the first application of blockchain digital goods. Um, and we're excited about potential future cases as well. I've noticed that there's been intentional consistency focusing on the collectible avatar title and kind of avoiding calling them NFTs or pushing the blockchain technology part. What's that all about? Yeah, I think that uh, Steve and Polly, uh, so Steve obviously is our founder and CEO and Polly is our uh, chief product officer. Uh, they've done a nice job of, of stating this, which is that we want to make sure we're creating something that's of high value to users um, that uh, benefits them in a simple and accessible way. And so, um, you know, we we try to emphasize the value of avatars versus talking about it from a technology perspective. Obviously, uh, the work that we're doing with blockchain, we think is really cool. We think it has a lot of value, but we really want to be leading with how it's additive to the user's experience. So if users want to know about that and they care to learn more about it, we're happy to be part of that journey and bring awareness to it. But if they don't care, that's okay as well. Um, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we're building something that is uh, of high value. And uh, what we think collectible avatars does is it uh, it creates ownership. And so that has really nice value from a creator perspective, as well as people who decide to buy it. Um, and in the future, we think that there's going to be a really fun set of use cases with portability, where these are truly goods of the internet. Um, and it's not something that's necessarily limited to Reddit itself. Do you think that collectible avatars would have launched if blockchain hadn't existed? Yeah, that's a really interesting what if. Uh, I wonder myself, like what the path for the product would have been. Um, we think that there's a lot of new opportunities here because of where we are today with the technology. Um, perhaps we would have still gone down the path with uh, avatars being something that you could purchase and, and it's something that benefits creators. But what we're seeing is with the technology, there's a whole new set of ways that uh, creators can engage with their audience. Uh, so for example, uh, one of our creators, uh, Tyler Faust, he actually has figured out a way to airdrop new goods to people who have purchased his original goods which is something that is uniquely enabled by the blockchain. So we're seeing that value is being created in ways that we may not necessarily have forecast or anticipated. Um, and that's just one of the cool things about um, our users on Reddit. They, they use the tools that we have and they come up with really creative new ways to use them. I've noticed that if a user goes to the avatar marketplace today, that everything is sold out. Is that by design or is it because it's still early stages and there are plans to scale things up? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, we're really excited that both of the times we ran these shops and we kind of call them pop-up shops internally, that both of the times we did it, we, uh, we sold out of all the goods before we could bring on new goods. Um, and ultimately, we would love to be at a place where we can fulfill um, everyone's demand if people want things that there are goods available to them. Um, and so what I'll say is uh, stay tuned, uh, th there's more coming. Uh, and we uh, we wanna be able to provide users with what they want and what they've expressed as things that they really love. Um, so yeah, we're, we're getting started on the journey and, and there's more to come here. Are there any plans to allow users to resell their collectible avatars on Reddit? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, we have seen users uh, ask for that. We've uh, 
I think that one of the things that users really like is the simplicity with which we've brought this entire experience to bear. And we've seen uh, the, the request to bring that functionality in-house as well. So uh, to all of you uh, who are listening, who, who have been clamoring for it, we've, we've heard it. Um, uh, what I'll say is we are always looking to what our users are telling us uh, about what they want and constantly evaluating if it's the right time to offer those types of functionality. Um, so stay tuned is what I'll say. We're, we're, we're eager to expand this ecosystem and make this the, the best thing that it can be. You mentioned how users can take their collectible avatars outside of Reddit, but on Reddit, are there any other utilities or benefits to owning a collectible avatar? So one of the things that we're about to launch, and by the time the, the audience hears it, you would have already seen it in product, is a brand new way to showcase uh, collectibles on your profile and in hover cards. So it's going to be a brand new way that users can uh, show multiple avatars that you have uh, on the platform. So it's going to continue building on the identity part of the experience. And we think that's going to be a really fun way to experience avatars on the platform. We've got other stuff cooking as well in terms of things that you can do with the avatars on the platform. And um, yeah, again, I'll say stay tuned. Uh, we've got more use cases for them on the platform. I've kind of felt that collectible avatars might seem like an odd addition to the Reddit platform. How does it fit into Reddit's mission, which is to bring community and belonging to everyone? Right. So community and belonging obviously is at the heart at everything that we do here at Reddit. And a really important word that we added to the mission recently was empowerment. So it's not only to bring community and belonging to everyone, but to bring community, belonging, and empowerment. And so the first step of that journey is what we're doing here with collectible avatars. It's it's a very specific use case, right? Uh, like artists who are creating um, snooze who then get represented in the identity part of our experience. But it's really exciting to us because it's the first way that we're showing users that empowerment is for everyone. Um, it's not necessarily for really well-established, well-known artists. It's for everyday Redditors. And some of these folks have become names in uh, in the blockchain space because of what, we, what we're doing. And we're really excited about that. We think that's great. And we want to continue building those types of empowerment experiences on the platform. And so um, I think the short answer is that it's our first step in that empowerment journey. And we think there's a lot more to be mined here. The avatar builder is sort of like a meta game where you can combine pieces of one avatar with another. Laura, a staff engineer, was responsible for rewriting and retrofitting the avatar builder to support collectible avatars. Here she is. Uh, I'm Laura. I'm a staff software engineer on the Marketplace Supply Team, which is part of the Collectible Avatars project. What are some of the things that you worked on with Collectible Avatars? So I work primarily on the art and artist support side of Collectible Avatars. So figuring out firstly, what is an avatar and its constituent pieces? And then also, how do we get artists to be able to submit their artwork, go through review and ultimately sell it on the storefront? You mentioned an avatar is a bunch of different pieces. What does that look like from like a data model perspective? Yeah, so in our avatar art system, there are eight layers that you can put art in sort of back to front. So you could have a legs layer, which is, you know, pants and the feet. You can have a hat layer. So an accessory is one or more of those layers plus some metadata. Uh, so for example, hair accessories usually have two layers. They have the part in front of the head like bangs, and then the part behind the head like long hair behind your shoulders. Uh, so that is what an accessory is essentially, is one or more layers, uh, and then some metadata about how its colors are composed. Can you change the colors? Who can use this? Is it a free accessory? Is it a collectible accessory? Uh, is it a premium accessory? and then some boring technical stuff like when was it created. One of the big changes with collectible avatars is the fact that creators can actually make them now. What were some of the changes you needed to do to enable that? Yeah, so the first thing was less of an engineering project. It was write down all the rules. 
uh, there were so many rules of what was required for avatars, like what are the allowed positions where a hand is allowed to be. So it lines up with like the cup of coffee that you could also be holding or whatever else. So writing down all the rules took a really long time. Uh, and then doing our best to automatically validate the rules um, that at least can be easily automatically validated to try to minimize the amount of time that creators submitted art. And then we came back to them like, actually, it's broken in the back end. Could you draw it again? Which isn't fun for anybody. Um, we also typically in the before times, we would just get a folder of art uh, from our illustrators and an engineer would upload it. Uh, that doesn't scale super well when all of a sudden you have hundreds of artists giving you hundreds of outfits. So also building a portal where they can go and submit their own art. They can put it in the different layers themselves so that an engineer doesn't mess it up and put the hat in the hair layer as engineers are wont to do uh, and allow them to specify things like should this particular face have a color changing skin tone or do I want it to have this blue tone that I picked out perfectly to go with everything else? You mentioned that SVGs are used for the avatar's layers. Why was that image format chosen over something like PNG? Yeah, there's a very uh, simple reason, which is color changing. So one of the cool things about avatars is that you can change your hair color, you can change your skin tone, some of the free accessories uh, allow you to change like the color of your shirt so that we didn't have to launch 40 jerseys for every single sports team. We launched one jersey and you can change the color of the jersey. That's not, it's at least not easily doable with raster artwork, but having it in an SVG format, it's just a CSS class that you can throw on of here's what the body color is for this art versus the hair color. The Avatar Builder has technically been around for a while, but I know there was a rewrite. Why did that service need to be rewritten? Yeah, so my team inherited the Avatar Builder about three years ago as kind of a standalone prototype. Totally functional, a lot of great foundation in place, but just this very standalone isolated service. It had its own REST endpoints uh, and didn't talk to really any other Reddit service until you got to the point of saving your profile picture. And then that's a supported API that we were able to just call. That worked great for a bit. Uh, it was iframed into the web experience, web viewed into the mobile experiences. And then as the avatars got more and more popular, there was a desire to more seamlessly integrate with the rest of Reddit. Like, oh, what if we had create your avatar as part of the onboarding flow or as part of this and that other flow uh, as people are interacting with their accounts. That was a big pain to do with a very standalone service. Um, also, when something is designed generally, a lot of the patterns stopped making sense. Uh, so mobile really wanted to use scroll, like horizontal scroll patterns that don't make a ton of sense on web. Nobody wants to horizontal scroll through a carousel. Uh, so we also wanted to be able to have platform specific UX for certain interactions and have everything be native mobile. So we rewrote first to have native mobile. Uh, so an iOS implementation and an Android implementation. Then the fact that it was all REST-based APIs when our mobile apps were almost entirely on GraphQL at that point was a pain point. Uh, we weren't necessarily being great citizens continuing to go towards this older API standard when every other team had fully migrated to GraphQL. So then we also migrated to GraphQL and eventually got to the point where we were at parity with the rest of Reddit's traditional tech stack and that made development a lot faster and a lot more standard. When collectible avatars launched, the number of avatars on Reddit exploded. How did you solve those scaling challenges? Yeah, so one of our big goals for like the first year of collectible avatars was to try to get a couple million people to have collectible avatars. Uh, it was an ambitious goal. I was not personally confident that we were going to hit it. We hit our goal. I think in late December. So that was great for the team, a good way to end the year. But in order to have millions of people 
select and claim a collectible avatar, we needed millions of avatars. And until the collectible avatars project, I think that there were like maybe 600 accessories in our Postgres table. And now there are tens of thousands of things. Uh, we had, I think, five outfits. They were the original onesies. And now we have about 40 million outfits in our database. Uh, so firstly, database storage. We were lucky to have engineers who had built very sensible database plans to begin with. So that was less of a big problem than one might think. Um, but all of our endpoints uh, weren't paginated. They had never needed to be paginated before, paginated now. Uh, things like searching and filtering, making lots of processes batched or async in job consumers, things like that. Um, you need to render 40 million images. That's a pretty sizable task. You can't really use exactly the same plan that you had been using for five images. So it was a lot of backfilling, uh, mostly just resilience into the system, being able to start, stop, and restart things uh, if a job failed or if a job made partial progress. Did you run into any issues when implementing the avatar builder on different clients like iOS or Android? Yeah, I would say one of the things I love about our team in Reddit in general is that engineers have a lot of autonomy to interpret designs and product specs according to their platform. So most of the differences were able to be caught by engineers. Uh, like, hey, Android doesn't really do explicit back buttons. That's not really a thing on this platform. Uh, you know, people tend to swipe down or swipe backwards instead of tapping a button. Um, so that was one way to try to make things feel as platform native as possible while still working off roughly the same design of like there's an indication in which you close this modal. Um, there were also a variety of problems around SVG support. Uh, mobile clients, especially iOS, don't render SVGs the same way that a web client does. They typically convert to a raster image and then put the raster image on the page, similar to using an image tag in HTML. That breaks the color functionality. Uh, so we had to write an SVG parser and display library into iOS, uh, which supports a subset of the SVG language because supporting the whole thing was, you know, a years long open source project, not like get this ready for uh, iOS launch. So that also has limited to some extent what the art can have in it because it needs to look identical across web, Android, iOS, and our backend image renderer that generates the profile pictures. Auditing uh, what rules are allowed was fun. We did a lot of testing of like our illustrators trying to break it, giving us lots of images where they thought something might not work and then checking visually if it rendered everywhere. Obviously, checking everything manually isn't very scalable. So what kind of automated testing did you build for the project? Yeah, so one of the nice things about having a fairly small list of things that can be done in SVG and the fact that I can look at the iOS implementation and check what tags they've handled as we were able to build an allow list based off of that. So if you try to use a tag that's not in the allow list, it'll tell you no. Uh, and then maybe you can go talk to engineering and be like, can I actually not use this? And we can have an experiment about it. Uh, but that has mostly saved us at this point from rendering problems for new things. Um, there's also just a lot of steps and moving pieces in avatar art. So largely where we have focused our automated testing is acceptance criteria at the very end. So all of our data prior to going live runs through a script to make sure that everything is valid. Um, like all of the prices make sense. Nobody accidentally typoed, you know, nine cents versus nine ninety nine. Um, all strings conform to their expected string patterns. Everything matches what it's supposed to match. Uh, foreign key relationships across different services and different databases can be tough. So we pre-validate all of that so that we know that once we push it live, hopefully we're not going to wind up with any random like null pointer errors where like this thing can't be found. 
Collectible avatars are created by both individual artists and Reddit. What are some of the differences between the two? Yeah, so for now, the main difference is scale. So artists are typically, at least so far, the rule has been that they can have up to three outfits and they can sell at most a couple thousand of each of those outfits. Uh, For our bigger Reddit and brand partnership collections, there can be millions of uh, different unique items that are being sold and potentially millions of outfits. Uh, So our really big first drop by Reddit, we had four teams, animals, memes, robots, and streetwear. And each of those were meant to be as unique as possible. Like we wanted to make a really big splash. Everyone could get their very own. Uh, We knew that we probably wouldn't get to like full true uniqueness because that was just too many things, but we wanted to get as far as we could. And that created an art problem. Like how do you design 10 million, 20 million unique outfits? You would need a lot of artists and a lot of time. So we decided to do it generatively, uh, which is just combinatorics. If you got this many pants and you got this many shirts and this many hats, mix them all up. Um, that was a really hard art problem to find things that looked good together in every combo. And I do not envy them for that task. Um, but we wound up building a lot of tooling around this idea of generative art, even just down to a calculator. So I was getting a lot of questions as the engineer of like, if I do five hats and six tops, is that better than doing seven tops and three hats? Uh, So I built a little uh, widget that all of the design team could use to plug in a whole bunch of different numbers and see where their output went to figure out how they wanted to plan their time. Uh, Or even things like, if I do this one shirt, but I do it in six colors, like how is that different from doing seven hats? Because certain pieces of the avatar are a little bit easier to design versus others. Like eyes are pretty easy. They're just eyes, but there's not so much creative expression you can have with the eyes. Um, So lots of sort of negotiation on what the different pieces of that project look like. Uh, And then engineering comboed them all up. And that's where we started to do things like rendering millions and millions of output images. The look of collectible avatars was something that just had to be done right. Donnie, a director of design, shed some light on how the visuals came together. Yeah, I'm Donnie Guy. I lead our Reddit X team along with our emerging markets and international teams. Uh, Reddit X is our special projects area, which includes what you see today, which is collectible avatars, our Web3 technologies that we're uh, engaging within and uh, chat in some of the areas that we're focusing on in the future. So within the Reddit X team, we do have... um, a studio in itself, a creative studio team that uh, does its own artwork. We have creators that we've hired from some of the creator programs we've done. We have our own artists in-house. We help out with brands. And so that creative studio team will create commercials, um, the art where we've done our own personal drops, drops with brands. And we have a whole team dedicated to making these collectible avatars successful in, in the various ways of media. For the first drop of collectible avatars designed by Reddit itself, There were 10 million of them divided into four groups. How did you decide on those four groups? Yeah, we we got together as a team and really assessed what are the human natures uh, that people really gravitate to or really have deep passions for. And we got to a pretty substantial list and started to break that down to different factions. Um, We finally did a set of four. We wanted to keep it somewhat lean in our sort of first launch but be impactful categories. And so of those four categories, one was around fashion. What would fashion be like in that that perspective, but more digital fashion, that's Drip Squad. Um, Folks love gaming, robotics. That's really big on Reddit as well. So we wanted to hit that that nature of entity um, tech. And that group was the singularity. Um, People love their animals and they love their their pets and different animals that are out there. And so that's where off friends comes on that sort of nice sentimental vibe of a category and faction. And then lastly, which is where the birth of memes happened on Reddit. We wanted the meme squad. What's fun, entertaining, 
uh, engaging. And that's where the fourth faction of Meme Squad came along. What would you say is unique about collectible avatars? Yeah, what's really unique is there's nothing else like it today in the form of self-expression in its truest form of digital identity. Um, you have these other avatars out there that resemble you, what you look like today in your physical form. And one area that we kind of asked ourselves is the physical world doesn't allow you to fully identify yourself um, because of the limitations of apparel, materials. I can't have these expressive things all over me uh, as you can in the digital space. And uh, But with digital fashion, there's very, very few limits. And that brings a very authentic element to yourself uh, that you can express in communities, online, across platforms, and all those other great areas that this technology unlocks. Um, for example, if someone to look at my avatar, uh, I'm a very sticker head, love fashion. Um, so I have a drip squad element on it that I was really passionate for. And those initial factions we talked about, um, I have one that shows like a digital heart, sort of a robotic element. It goes to my tech love. It goes to like my futuristic sort of thinking and, and why I have the job of different special projects. Um, it really goes into accessories that I have. I have one that says FOMO. I very much live a FOMO kind of life of YOLOing and just missing out on elements. And I'm like, oh, bummed, but I really want to go do that thing. Um, I love collectors and, vi and vinyls. So I have another little accessory that's a character of the element there. Um, but each one really, when we created them or a creator created them, it really is about that self-identification and self-expression of who they are and how those kind of mix and match style together. And that's really what make the visuals unique. And then we also kind of get expressive in the sort of headspace of where the head is. And so the porthole on Reddit that you get to see, you get to really see these elements where the cone heads came alive or like a meme might have like the big meme pyramid on top or a big sneaker if you're the sneaker head. Um, and all those aspects really draw attention to your avatar and then get a self-expression. We've seen comments where people are like, I love your avatar and I love your expression there. And, and, oh, I wish I would have got that one. I really like how you match those together as your style. And so all of that kind of creates that unique visual perspective that has made collectible avatars successful. Collectible avatars on Reddit launched with a creator designed collection. Why did you start with the creator made avatars instead of something like a brand partnership? It's really two faceted. The first one being we want to allow creators to make money on Reddit. We want the users that use Reddit to have a place to kind of self-express them split their areas. And so as a creator, you want that, you want that destination and that's what we wanted to provide for them. And so that's where we unlocked the creator program to do that. Um, we started off small, uh, just so we can test stress test our abilities, bring them in how, um, in to work with some of our own creators and some of the work and really kind of highlight what a collaboration could look like with creators and, and our other artists out there. So yeah, we had to keep it kind of low, but we, we left it open to participate with some really good creators to kind of launch it. The brand side, it's a little different. It requires a lot of in-house areas uh, within our crew. Um, a lot of brands are coming to us you know, expressing, it's, you know, we did a Super Bowl. Um, we've done a couple other partnerships at the moment, some are in the works. And each one of those, we're highlighting what we've seen successes in, and, some, and our artists are bringing those art to life as we kind of work together with them. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's really about bringing your self-expression uh, and your digital identity. So we want you as a user to be excited to express yourself. And through the creator program, we're letting that art be very expressive. So you get that side of yourself. And then as a brand IP, you kind of get to see the IPs that you really want to latch onto and self-express. And that's like a great combination of that. And of course, we have our own drops, our own creator studio teams doing. And so a combination of those three is, is really like a happy triad of allowing you to kind of self-express yourself with your collectibles. There was a huge collectible avatar drop for Super Bowl 57. How did that collaboration come about? So we have a pretty amazing business development team that's been hard at work for finding the opportunities for our collectible avatars. We wanted something at scale and the Super Bowl happened to kind of fall in our laps to see what that scale would look like. We wanted to stress test our systems with such an event. I would say one thing that I've been the most proud of is every single drop, it may not seem like it on the consumption user side, but every single drop we've tested something new, either the way that it's claimed or how the claim of, you know, feature goes itself or how to achieve them from free to paid and so on. 
And this one just kind of unlocked us that ability to try something new. Um, and in that process of working with the Super Bowl, they were designed by our in-house studio team, great team that did that. You kind of alluded to some of the ads. The team had a great opportunity of doing the ad in Times Square and some of these great other marketing materials that that um, the team did some great motion graphics on. And in that journey, we, we sketch them out. We get together, we sketch out ideas. There's a plethora of paperwork of ideas of sketches. We work with the, N the NFL. We have some conversations back and forth. What are they looking for? What are some of their, their values they want to stick to? We want to make sure we represent the brand well. And uh, so through those conversations, we get to a certain place where it feels fun. It feels Reddit. It feels Super Bowl. It feels engaging. And then the creative studio team really took it a step further. And while we were doing this creative 3D assets for it, proposed this sort of commercial to them. So we kind of, anytime we do something, we always kind of want to up the level all the time. And so we brought those to the table and they seem to really appreciate those. Um, and then even during some of that journey, we, my favorite thing to work with the brands on is to kind of let them let loose. Sometimes the NFL can feel very restrict. And so one of the areas that we really wanted to let loose on was the hand. And if you look at the hand that has the, the Super Bowl ring on it, and those aspects that was to kind of be fun and almost playful of like, you're the champion and, and kind of let loose in some of those aspects than what kind of an NFL maybe usually feels like. The NFL is an established brand. And I know that companies like that are usually pretty conservative about how their IP is used and who they partner with. How did Reddit make companies comfortable and want to actually release collectible avatar collections? Yeah, great question. Uh, let's see. The first part of it, we made them feel comfortable because we made it simple. We really made the process and the claiming simple and understandable by users. It's a anytime there's new technology from web one to web two to now web three, folks really need to gravitate how it affects their everyday lives. Is it is it safe? Is it secure? And I think that's one of the areas that we kind of really leaned on to make it feel safe and secure. That's why we have over eight million wallets now. Um, it's why the we're having a lot of brands and uh, other partners want to do some work with us. And that has sort of unlocked that. We we launched and called it the, the winter of NFTs, but because of the process we took, that is what made it feel safe on that journey through that winter. It didn't, wasn't winter to us in that way. Um, and because of that, those brands feel we can help them on their journey into this space. And on that journey, you have the mix and match, like you, like you mentioned, and we've had some designs where we've done some fun things with some of the logos that of these brands that have come into play. Um, and, and rightfully so there, you know, those brands might be like, this is amazing. This is going to, you know, go crazy and people are going to love this. Uh, but in mix and matching, you know, there's a lot of assets out there that, that, you know, from creators to other brands have, to have done with us where you might end up with like a little poop on your, on your logo and you might not want that as a brand. And so some of those aspects, we have to kind of really finagle with brands to make them understand the mix and matching, but where we kind of break that down is to really understand the human nature of self-identification. So let's say the NFL logo we talked about previously, you have the chiefs and you have the Eagles and you have these, you know, teams like combating. And in that journey of combining those together, or even other teams that maybe you explore, the NFL, you know, was a little concerned, or any brand would really be concerned of like, well, I don't want these cross teams to compete. That that might have some sentiment with the teams themselves. We don't want to upset anybody. And the way that we framed it as this is actually on the inverse of that. If you look at the really excitement on it, that's really understanding the true fan. Then a household could have multiple teams that they're into. Someone might have a passion because they have family members. If you think about the Super Bowl itself, you had the mom that had a player on both sides of the house. Now, in a way on Reddit, she can self-identify that way and it would be her true authentic self. And so that was kind of the unlock with brands when we talk about having, especially if it's multiple teams or multiple connections in some way to their IP, we say, hey, this isn't a competition. This is more of like advancing your IP in that perspective and understanding who you, the fans are and their loyal, their loyal connections. I've been really impressed that the creator made avatars strike a good balance between the creator's artistic style and the Reddit avatar style. How did you work with creators to ensure that every collectible avatar felt like it belonged on Reddit? It's been an interesting balance. We've learned a lot 
from the beginning of the creator program? This is a really great question. We gave creators a lot of free reign with some limitations of how our builder works, just to make sure that when it comes to life, that elements can sit on top of each other because it's like layers. And as far as the Reddit brand value goes, I think that's a brand value in itself, being able to self-express to inclusive nature. It's a community in its own right or avatar uh, creators have their own sub communities that they have and really connecting with each other. So in a lot, it's not just the collectible that you get to see. And so through that community and through the brand value there, creators have been able to unlock their artwork and their self-expression in that way. Um, we get, we do give them the, again, the, the builder guidelines to build within. Um, we do kind of try and focus in certain areas. Like, again, I was mentioning, um, you know, the hand of God or like, what would a snoo like antenna be like, and how do you engage that like creatively or what are the accessories around you or the different layers? And all of a sudden, maybe you can have wings or things behind a head or, um, how is it expressing earlier that on the head, you have this great amount of space to really self-identify. There's also layers to that. So the head could be one thing the eyes can be another. You could have a face like mask almost sitting on top of it. And so creators have gotten really good at creating Easter eggs as well that you don't know exist when you get the item. You go into the builder and you start taking layers off your, all of a sudden there's like, oh, I didn't know that existed underneath there. That's so cool. And now it makes you feel like you even had an expansive, more experience with this creator because they gave you multiple layers of their artwork. And so that was one thing that we kind of unlocked by giving them a little free reign with just a small amount of like limitations and let them kind of kind of go with sky's the limit there. Is the creator program moving towards a more complete self-service platform or will there always be a certain set of approved creators? Yeah, the way we kind of see that is we want it to be a self-service. We want it to be a service for everybody that can come in. And so we need to build our way to that so it can be sort of safe and, and secure and, and work within our system so it doesn't break down. Um, there's that self-service. I still think there's a level of, you know, white glove service that you want to provide on certain scale and certain opportunities. And so we want to figure out that balance of where that is. And maybe when someone requests that sort of service of, of how we go about that. Um, but yeah, you, you nailed it that that's the unlock that we want to get to, because we would, we want to get to a place where we don't want to be the full creators in that way, but we want to create the tools and experiences that unlock for that. So we would, are you know working a lot on utility and access and other features and other elements that can play out with with this technology and let the creators and and brands and some of our own um, artwork really define how to achieve that. So help me pull it all together. What does the full process look like for a collection from inception to design to the full release on the marketplace? Yeah, so we. We have a list that folks can join to be a part of the creator program. Um, we look through those. Um, really what we're looking for is when we do a reach out is saying, could they use the tools that are needed in that space? When we first kicked off, it was very limited um, in the sense of we really needed you to spick, stick to a certain Adobe suite to, to kind of finalize those, those assets and work within the builder. And so we did a lot of handholding there to help in some of that, that process. Uh, we've made a ton of advancements there on a couple fronts. One, the education up front. We have a lot more education and videos and, and some groups you can, you know, like different communities you can join to um, really talk to the other artists and kind of help each other out. Um, then you have our creator portal, which is the asset collection system that lets you know it's going to work in the builder um, and then sort of unlock that for creators along that process. So once we understand who can use the suite and come through, um, that allows us to then to take it to the next level, which is, you know, they got to set up like Stripe accounts. They got to get into the creator portal, understand the builder, how that those assets work. And then they go kind of through a drawing submission phase and they go back and forth. We do some legal checks with IP. We maybe do some extra checks to make sure the, the craft is there. We might even sometimes give some advice in certain areas because we have learned how, how some of these can be successful and what to kind of pay attention to. So we kind of do some advice there. Um, but other than that, then you kind of take a seat back and just wait for the drop to happen. Working with the blockchain was something new for Reddit in 2022. So I spoke with George, a senior engineer, to understand how this new technology was utilized for collectible avatars. So I'm George and I'm part of Reddit Team X. 
and I'm working on the backend of the collectible avatars platform. My responsibility so far has been like when I joined the company, we were like aiming for our 10 million collectible avatar launch. And it was about like making sure that our backend system, especially like the new service that we have built in our team, were uh, had enough like scalability for the amount of traffic that we're going to get. And also like trying to understand all the problems and issues that we might have like with just working with the blockchain because this was something kind of completely new for Reddit, at least at this scale. And yeah, we're going to have like 10 million collectible avatars and all of this like would be available at some point for pretty much most a lot of users like to claim. Yeah, and it was like kind of testing everything and making sure while we are testing, we're not looking too much data, which is kind of a problematic with blockchain because it's kind of decentralized. So everyone has an access to it. So everyone pretty much can see when you start testing things on it. So this, I would say, like most maybe like a challenging thing that in the backend, like we had to do. And also, of course, like kind of deploying the contracts, maintaining them and so on, like following the latest standards. How do you do scalability testing on the blockchain? Yeah, so testing something on scale. So in our case, like we had like two options. So kind of we ourselves like running as a node and like going through that or like we're using another kind of a third party providers where the third party provider will be responsible for actually like scaling up. So it so will be kind of a normal API that we will communicate with and they will be responsible for like running the node and communicating with the blockchain and ensuring that everything ends up on a blockchain in the correct state. So that part is actually pretty standard as like you would do with the rest of like kind of a load testing etc like because in the end you're just kind of testing a certain api the problem comes when you want to test things on the blockchain with making sure that it's still kind of uh, like the test data is not necessarily leaked to the users uh, because like every time like you, let's say I like minted something for testing, this is on blockchain and every single person who is watching this blockchain can actually catch that actually already just minted something and yeah, ensuring that like the info data is going in this, uh, test minting is kind of not confidential <laughs> and that like we're allowed it to actually post this. So collectible avatars are built on the polygon network. Why was that chosen over something like Ethereum? The reason we went for Polygon, so there were multiple reasons. So uh, first was coming from like the goal that we're going to aim. So like collectible avatar was like something completely new at this scale. And we wanted to get the maximum possible engagement from users. And, but we tried to bring like, it's the best experience for them. It was not like the goal to bring us an NFT, but actually something usable for them. And that meant that like uh, the cost for users should be like as much as possible minimum. And usually for this, yeah, like uh, Polygon is one of the like the best options that you can go as a network because like known as like layer two network and the uh, gas fees and the gas fees are the prices that like every time you pay, whenever there's some transaction is happening, like I don't know, minting, transferring or doing anything actually with your tokens. And uh, this is like a lot of cost, like on Ethereum, for example, this can get like several dollars for like even simple like transaction. And doing this for every Reddit user first is not financially uh, good for Reddit because we had to do it like for 10 million, but also like later for our users, if they want to, I don't know, move their stuff to an open sea and then like sell them or trade together, which actually ended up to be the case. So Polygon was chosen for this reason first, because it's just cheap. Second, it was like really fast. So it was easy like to integrate with it and also like to run things at the scale. So because like with the 10 million, it was like no problem with Polygon. And the third thing, which I believe like is very important for us Reddit and in general for our community is kind of the environmental impact. And it's very well known that there is like a huge environmental impact coming from blockchain in general. And Polygon itself is known as like a kind of a proof of stake mechanism, uh, which ensures that there is like, there is minimum environmental impact when actually you are doing some transactions, minting and et cetera. And we are taking this responsibility ourselves too, especially when we're doing at this scale. So it was also important to try to find a network that will not um, 
leave too much like footprint on the environment. And yeah, Polygon was like a perfect for this chance because it was a proof of stake and there was like minimum computing power like necessary for doing our transactions. One of the things I've heard about other networks is that the price of gas fees often go up over time. Does the Polygon network have that same issue? Yeah, much similar, yeah. Like it's the price also like go up and down very often. Like on weekends we can have like huge spikes and so on. But the good thing is that in Polygon it's we're talking about like a few cents. So usually even if it like gets double price and so on, it's not that much visible. While in Ethereum, you might get like a few dollar difference. And then, yeah, when you're trading things at scale, this can like show like a huge difference on your bill. When a Reddit user goes on the avatar marketplace and clicks the buy button on a collectible avatar, what goes on on the back end? Yeah, so the flow is actually quite interesting because like, uh, first it's like a purchasing something. So like whenever a user tries to purchase something, it's like kind of purchasing just anything you would buy. So we have kind of our storefront, which basically acts like as a store where users are buying. So like this is kind of the first layer, which tries to make sure the payment was there, everything was correct, etc. So So ensuring the safety for users and also safety for Reddit. So this is like the kind of the first process that takes place. And after that, it comes start, starts like the more NFT related part, which is basically getting like some user inventory, updating, so like giving user the actual like latest item. And after that, it's the updating like the user uh, avatar builder. So as you know, like we want to give user like right after purchase, a possibility to choose the avatar because that's what most of the users are actually purchasing them because they just want a cool avatar. So what we try to do first is like to make sure that user has the avatar available for them. So right after they purchase, they can immediately go to their avatar builder, start like playing with avatar or like even make their unique one. And the same time in parallel, we start the minting process. Like why it happens in parallel? Because it can sometimes take some time. So like a few seconds and up to like a few minutes. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, like we want to be kind of environmentally friendly. So we try to kind of batch our minting processes. So like we try to batch like several means in single one and therefore like reducing the costs for Reddit, but also reducing the impact that we are having. And therefore, like it takes like a bit longer than actually the than actually like when the user sees that the avatar is in their builder platform. But yeah, in like a minute or two, it's already on a blockchain registered. So user has the address now and they can just pay the assets and now they're owner of it. So they can, if they want to sell it, they can go to OpenSea. If they want to take it to another platform, they can just, they need just to make sure that it supports Polygon network that we're using. And then they can do like whatever they want with it. Yeah, and maybe like one important part that happens in the beginning is the vault creation. So uh, most of our Reddit users actually were completely new in this environment. So we try to take the responsibility to help them to understand like the risks, to understand like what how the technology actually works and help them to take like the correct steps of creating their vault, like security, securing in a way, but still trying to be uh, kind of decentralized, so not take the ownership, so like keep the this non-custodial platform uh, way. And yeah, this is like one of the first thing happening and then like trying to make sure the purchase took place and then giving user the actual avatar so they can like start the fun part. And meanwhile, like somewhere in parallel minting the thing and informing the user that that stuff is actually minted and now you can use it. I'm impressed that Reddit has successfully launched not only the collectible avatars project, but also a blockchain wallet in the form of the vault and a marketplace. Was it hard doing all of that at the same time? No, definitely there were like some challenges, especially what was like understanding what is important for our users. Like, uh, what do we want to do like first? So in our case it was like, ensuring like the safety of users. So like the vault creation and these, like making sure that they understand, they like 
secure their vault so like they will not really lose whatever they are going to claim right now and then like ensuring the payment process because we don't want them to pay for something and then have like some failures in this so basically like we went by priorities which ones are like higher priority and then making sure that like whatever users want which was like getting a really really nice looking avatar so making sure that they're getting this first as the level avatar and in parallel trying to do this like minting process and as fast as possible to have it there with having like the minimal cost and environmental impact with like meeting so many things at once. Because I must say like, we were like, we had like very high expectations with the project definitely, but for me, it was like, good surprise to see how many users were actually like minting right when we started, like the amount of claims that we were getting for the 10 million or for like the purchasable collectible avatars. It was like really, really interesting to see like amount of traffic that we got like from the first second it was released. Were there any issues that you dealt with when you were integrating with the Polygon network, IPFS or any other blockchain technology? There were the same challenges I would say as we had like working with the Polygon because this as a technology, it was something completely new for us, for our team. And it would include like those on saying like first the security concerns that we might have with this, understanding how the technology itself works, how to integrate with it. And because it's decentralized, it's a bit different way of thinking than we used to do things. So when the when the system is like centralized, you have a lot of control of it as a company. And as an engineer, you have kind of safety nets because if something goes wrong, in worst case, you can try to fix it. So like run some investigation, try to bring some security team and like bring the state to the correct place. While doing this in decentralized is quite difficult, if not impossible. <laughs> so this was like the challenging part, like changing your brain, the way you like you used to think the last few years, I know when you have been working always with centralized platforms, like thinking in a way of decentralized and IPFS like, was one of them because it's kind of a storage where we're storing like the our images and everything because we want it to be like still decentralized until the end. And yeah, it, it just involves like completely different way of thinking how like how you access the storage, like what is like re reliability, what is the persistency and like all these things were like completely new learning for us. And also, as I mentioned before, like testing, this was quite some challenge, just like realizing uh, how to test things here safely. And uh, of course, like also testing everything costs some money because it's a transaction running on this centralized network. So like every time you test something, you actually are paying for the tests. So yeah, I would say like it, it was challenging, but interesting because it was completely new environment, new way of thinking. So like you had to kind of remember what you learned before, like keep your experience, but like turn off your brain in some ways and try to think completely in a new, new way, in this decentralized way. Yeah, this was like, I think challenging, but like really interesting. And I must say like our team like did really, really great job. First, like with like very, very good, uh, security experts who had like good experience in blockchain technologies in general. So like they helped us to understand in general, like how to approach this problem in a safe way, but also like really, really smart group of people who just in a very short amount of time learned all this and were able like to create this all together. You mentioned that someone who purchased a collectible avatar could take it and resell it on an NFT marketplace like OpenSea. How does that work? So, uh, first, it comes maybe uh, from the vault. So uh, the vault is like kind of your wallet where like you where you get like the ownership of the items that you claimed. And that's why like this is kind of the first step that we take. And we'll also try to explain this to users because even for users, I mean, it's a different way of thinking for us, but also a different way of thinking for users because even though it takes place in Reddit, it's uh, we are not owning actually this, uh, like we are owning the experience, like the safety, but we don't own their private keys, their passwords. So this is like where the user takes the full ownership of their tokens so whatever they claim when they created their vault they are now the owner of it which means they can do whatever they want with it and we have no control after this on it so once they have it they can just like move it to any other wallet like i don't know metamask ledger or like any other provider and then connect it this with uh, OpenSea, or if they want with another seller marketplace and just 
put the items there and sell. And yeah, because they are not the owners. So that's the whole idea of it. But what we try to do at Reddit is just trying to explain the security risks and also helping our users to make their vault safe. And one of these ways, for example, is uh, trying to help them like to safely make backups for it. Uh, like we have like very good solutions on mobile uh, versions. So we are helping them to create some backup, save it with the password, which is like more kind of common way of doing things. So like the users are more aware, like, it's okay, this is a password. This is something safe. I, sh I should not share this with anyone else. And it's easy to remember for them very often. So this is like one way that we help them to like to create a backup. But yeah, it's also very important like to communicate this thing that like we're making sure that it's safe, that like it's only you have this the key. This is not stored in our like servers. We don't have anything with, to do with that, but also helping users to understand how important it is to keep their secrets like safe because uh, we cannot help them to recover it. We cannot help them like to get away from any fraud because that's the whole idea of it, that now you are the owner of it completely. From Reddit's perspective, that token also has a usage, the collectible avatar and the Reddit user having access to the accessories on the avatar. How does Reddit tell if a user has sold their avatar? Oh, so uh, all this is actually being tracked on the blockchain. So for Reddit, we consider the blockchain as kind of a source of truth. So we have a service, we call them as a crawler. So this service basically continuously checks what is happening on the blockchain. So every NFT is kind of connected with one contract that we deployed previously. So we are following every kind of event that takes place with this contract. So whenever minting takes place or whenever someone sells, buys, so like only kind of transfer transactions. So we follow all this and we keep it in our kind of traditional centralized database the information. But of course, the only information we have is that this item was transferred from X address to Y address. And yeah, so all so the source of truth for us is the blockchain. So all we can do in this case is just to follow the events that are taking on blockchain and just store this information on our site and like keeping it up to date. So if for example, someone bought a collectible avatar on Reddit then went to OpenSea or another marketplace and sold it there, now we will catch this event on blockchain and then update in our inventory that now this user is no more the owner of it, but another user is the owner of it. So if that token goes to another Reddit user's wallet, then you would see that the ownership has changed? Yes, 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 that's correct. So we'll catch the address because on uh, blockchain, that's what is being registered. So like the from which address to which address it was transferred. So all we need to do is to find out which user is connected with this address in our platform. So, and it's very uh, important because like in our vault, like there is a, one user can have like one active address. So it's important that the address that was like received <laughs> is the address that is actually the one connected at Reddit because that's the way we kind of identified users. With all the success that Reddit has seen with collectible avatars, I'm sure there will be many more drops in the future. Make sure to keep your eyes peeled and probably the best place to do that is on the subreddit r collectible avatars. So what did you think? Does it sound cool to build Reddit, one of the largest sites on the internet? If so, check out our open positions at www.redditinc.com careers. And to get more behind the scenes info, check out Reddit's engineering blog at reddit.com slash r slash reddit eng. And that's it for now. See you in the next episode of Building Reddit. Building Reddit is an official podcast from Reddit. This episode was produced by Ryan H. Lewis. Thanks for listening.